What's up, everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Today, we'll be reviewing Barter House 20 Year Old. I have a sample of it and another sample that I received from this lovely lady over here, Wyoming Whiskey. Uh, Jamie, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, guys. Um, Rob, thanks for having me back. Uh, my name is Jamie. I'm a um, bourbon thing on social media, but I also um, work for the Balvenny as their Canadian brand ambassador. Um, but my my what got me into whiskey was bourbon. So I'm super grateful to be here. You're doing a whole month of bourbon, aren't you? This is the season finale, so to speak. Okay, okay. So yeah, that's awesome. So I'm I'm grateful to be here and, and talk about my first love, what got me into whiskey in the first place. And um, yeah, I'm 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 super amped to be here. I also have a podcast about whiskey, which is super fun, called the Whiskey Topic with my buddy Mark. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's drink some bourbon. That's right. So um, the bottle of Barter House 20. Do you have it with you or no? I do have it with me. I have it right here. I'll be I'll be very curious because this one, here it is. This it's beauty right here. Um it's pretty gone. Like <laughs> I got this a while ago and it's not it's it's definitely um more than halfway gone. Um and and I'm I'm one I'm curious to know how much that will affect the flavor. Um and 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 how different our our sort of take on these whiskeys will be. Um so I'm yeah, I'm I'm curious about that. Yeah, me too, because my friend Peter White, who I don't know if he's joined us just yet, but he probably will at some point uh gave me this sample. And I think his was relatively full. So that's a okay. it'll be a nice comparison. I'll and the, the Wyoming, I actually did a little bit of research, but I, maybe we'll go one at a time. Maybe that's for the best. <laughs> <laughs> so Mashville on the, on the Barter House 20 was, from my research, 86 corn. I think it was 8% uh, barley and 6% rye. I'm going to double check that just because I don't want to lie to our viewers. I love the old double check. Thank God for Google. What did we do before Google? And we could just right. have all this information at our fingertips. Exactly. So yeah, it's 86% corn, 8% malted barley, and 6% rye. Uh, this one for about 100 bucks here. And it's relatively, with the exchange and whatnot, about the yeah. same in the US, about 75 bucks. So I don't know. Did you, did you pick that up at the LCBO or? I got it in the states before it was available at the LCBO. Okay. Um, yeah. So I essentially just sort of, and it was one of those things that you do in the states where you're like, you go into a full panic because you see a whole shelf of things that you're like, I've never seen before in my entire life, and like we can't get it here and everything like that. And then of course, like you know, four months later, I walk into the LCBO and there's like shelves and shelves of it, and I was like, oh okay, so. Mm -hmm. No need to panic there, um, but I was really intrigued. I'm, I, like I'm a I'm a sucker for like a very cool label, and I was obviously drawn to this one sort of right away because it's very cool. Like, man, if you're like a a hipster drinking bourbon, like this is you're gonna be drawn right to this label. So it's um, people make fun of me on the podcast all the time. They're like, Jamie's a sucker for the bottle, <laughs> and uh, I can't lie. That's sort of what like drew me to it in the first place. Um, you know, the, the whole idea of the orphan barrels, but, you know, from it's a Weller, the whole thing, like the, the, the lore behind it, um, literally did not even appeal to me as much as the cool bottle did. And me, I don't know if that says a lot about my bourbon drinking habits, but, uh, also intrigued by the age statement, the 20 year age statement, which for me, like, you know, bourbons are great. My, my favorite bourbons are probably between... I don't know, like seven to like 11 years old. Like I'm not like yeah. super amped on crazy old bourbons. I sometimes, you know, I'm just, but, but uh, I'm, I'm going to revisit. I, it's been a while since I've had this one. So I'm excited to, uh, to revisit it. It's. It smells very nice. It does smell very nice. And it doesn't smell 20 years old in my opinion. Like, and what I mean by that is it doesn't smell overly oaky like you would expect from an old bourbon. 
and yeah, I think and I and I think you're right and I think that's I I kind of always enjoyed this one maybe you know more than you know I remember some of my friends who are also whiskey people were sort of like man I don't know about this like price wise or whatever weren't really um uh they were a little skeptical about it um it, but I I never minded it I I never found it to be super super over oaked like chewing on a stick like sometimes so super old. Uh, bourbons can be. I, I I always found. I mean, I haven't even drank it yet, but um, no, I'm 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 enjoying the nose on this very much. I get a lot of that lovely sort of caramel sweetness to it. Since you have the bottle there, can you just tell uh, these guys are asking what the proof is? I think it was forty five, so ninety, but I could be wrong. 90, yeah, it, yeah, we got ninety point two, specifically ninety right. point two. Ninety point two. There you guys go. Uh, we have a bunch of people joining us. Hey guys. Of, what's up everybody? You guys are all awesome. Thank you for joining us tonight. What are you guys drinking? Maybe you guys can share that in the comments below. I'm trying to run two things here at once, so bear with me. I will um, I'll do my best to answer any questions you guys have or spin them to Jamie because I'm not you don't have the chat going, do you? No, I don't. I don't. So I will trust you to send me over anything that uh, anyone wants to hear. Yeah. So, so yeah, there's a beautiful caramel. Yeah, I was gonna little yeah. spicy note like that, that. It's a proper bourbon nose. Like if you got this in a blind tasting, you'd be like, "That's for sure bourbon." Like, yeah. like no Agreed. question about it. Yeah, I'm gonna go for a sip here too. Again, surprising. Um, you mentioned how the money spot is around like seven to nine years old. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if you said nine years old, but that's, I think it's up to nine years old. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't taste like it's 20 years old. And, and I mean that in the best way possible. Like I don't mean that in, in a negative way. Uh, when you're talking scotch, you tend to say, you know, a 20 years old doesn't taste 20 years old. That's a problem. You know what yeah. I mean? But you're talking bourbon and that's actually, in my opinion, kind of cool because it's not overly oaky at all. It's super sweet in my opinion. Um, yeah. yeah. And you get a lot of those similar tastes that you would from a nine to 12 year old bourbon in my opinion. Yeah, no, I agree with you. The, the mouth feels really nice on it. Like it's, it is rich. Um, and it's got those lovely, like that, just that little hint of spice at the end. It's got that caramelliness. Um, uh, it isn't, it's oaky for sure, but it's, I don't find it to be over oaked. I agree with you hundred percent between like seven. And I, I mean, like I, 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 I'm happy with an 11 year old bourbon too. Um, yeah, the, this one's, you know, the, for a 20, um, you do run the risk of over oaking it. Um, but I think this one's actually kind of nicely balanced. Yeah. And like I was expecting it to be drying on my, on, on the palate to the point where it would almost be not enjoyable. And, and that's kind of the, the beef a lot of bourbon drinkers have with older bourbon, right? That it's super drying, stu super astringent. Um, I don't find that at all. I'm, I'm not picking that up at all. I don't know if maybe I got a, a lucky bottle. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. Are you getting any of that? No, I'm not getting it. I'm not getting a super dryness out of it. I'm, it isn't like, no, you're, there is that sort of like, puckeriness that comes with those really old old whiskeys um that where you're just like oh my gosh i need a drink of water but this one is 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 sweet enough that you're and it's got that nice mouth feel that i'm not getting that that super dryness either for sure like i don't know man i really enjoy this one i'm yeah. i'm and, and it's actually held up in the bottle quite nicely as far as i'm concerned like i'm not i i'm not uh, disappointed in this at all I'm going to have to finish it soon because as you can see, you know, Mark Bylock, who I do the podcast with always and who you had on uh, just a little while ago, always says like, basically once you get to like half a bottle, you just finish it off because it's, yeah. it isn't going to get any better. All that headspace in there isn't going to, isn't going to make it any better. It's only going to, you know, take away. Um, so yeah, this might be one that uh, needs to, uh, needs to come to the front of the collection and get passed through and, and, uh, no, it's got, I like this. I like this yeah, one a lot. That's a good whiskey for sure. The, you know what, the one, um, whiskey that I've had that kind of goes against what 
Mark and I were agreeing on that night when we spoke about how whiskey is at its ideal about halfway through the bottle and then it kind of tapers off. Is this Glen Going 25 year old I have at the back here? Um, when I first opened it, it was probably at its worst. It was so hot and it's only a 48 percenter, but it was super hot. And then as it went down, it like gradually improved to the point where I literally have like three drams left and it's at its best. And I'm trying to savor those last yeah. bits. But uh, it's not yeah, gonna last. That's the, that is the unfortunate thing about having like a bottle that you're trying to savor is that like you actually don't want to crush you don't want to crush the bottle when you get to have it. You really want to, you know, enjoy it and uh, and, and keep enjoying it for a long period of time. Um, so, yeah, I know that you do run into that conundrum. Um, and I, I know a lot of people are really, you know, very committed to like, you know, you can pump out the air and do all this stuff. Frankly, I'm lazy and <laughs> I, I haven't I haven't got there yet in my whiskey journey. And I don't know, again, what that says about me as a whiskey drinker or person i'm not a collector at all um but no some people are like oh well no you can just you can just like take all the take all the air out of it with it and i'm just like oh that sounds like some eff like a lot of effort i would just ra maybe i would just rather drink it like i i don't know if i'm willing to put in the time and energy it takes to do that so yeah i'll just share with my friends one night i um i had uh, that bottle of 30 um the Belveni 30 um, kicking around and it was a friend's wedding over the weekend and it felt like the perfect time and I think there was about you know just less than half a bottle and I brought it and and shared it amongst our friends and it felt like exactly the right time to sort of crush the bottle there was enough people we like finished it in you know I'm not going to tell you how long it took us to finish it but <laughs> there was a few of us there was a few of us it wasn't just me and two friends it was it was there was a handful of us and so yeah it's one of those things where maybe it's a time to do a heel party like you know every year mark bylock hosts and everyone brings you know what's left in their bottles and just goes for it and uh it's always a good time you get to try stuff you didn't and you get to make room in your cabinet for all those holiday bottles like we always do ours around the holidays so yeah no it's um yeah, I think that's a that's a good idea. You're just like, oh, I got to crush some bottles. Why don't I just have a heel party? Done. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's a perfect opportunity. That that's kind of like a a nice coincidence, I guess you could say. It's not necessarily is right place, right time kind of situation. Unfortunately, like I end up hanging on to bottles and always looking for the right time, and then the right time comes and goes, and like this would have been a great time to open up that, you know, Balvini. 25 year old or whatever <laughs> nice shout out there thank you very much <laughs> it is still honestly I, I mean i love the 30 year old is incredible i'm a sherry guy so i don't know if i, I think the 25 year old that you maybe i was maybe i was just too many in the bag at that point i don't know <laughs> whiskey will do it uh, whiskey yeah whiskey will do yeah um i'm just gonna look at these real quick we have a lot of uh, YouTube whiskey reviewers on with us tonight, um, which is kind of cool because I don't know if you've been following along with our, what we call, well, I didn't patent it, so I won't claim it as my own for sure. Um, I always try to give credit to the Scotch test dummies for patenting it, but they don't even want to take credit for it. They said somebody else. Um, anyway, I'm talking about the whiskey fabric. So there's a bunch of whiskey reviewers and I think I saw the Scotch four dummies and Scotch test dummies on tonight. Nice. There's a bunch of guys that just love to review whiskey. And we, we all have like a group chat and we've become pretty close friends because of our uh, similar hobby and, and uh, because of YouTube basically. So I love that. I think like, that's what whiskey's all about, right? Like, it's so nice. Like, thanks for like hanging out with us guys. Like, that's awesome. Like, it's such a great community. I was chatting with someone today and who wants to get into the whiskey industry. And part of the reason why is because it's such a great community and everyone is, you know, ready and willing to support each other and give a hand and, and uh, share and just, you know, like totally, you know, encourage each other. So no, it's a, it's a really great, great community to be a part of. So yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I noticed that you guys kind of have something similar to all the ambassadors. Doesn't matter which, which 
company you represent, you guys are all friends. Like you guys all hang out. You guys seem to be very cordial. And it's it's cool. And the only the only time I've ever seen that is when whiskey is involved because usually competitors they're let's face it, they're not friendly, right? They they are competing for a reason. They they both want to have the best or you know, and that's not happening. This is a really this is a really good point, I think, and and I and I can't speak for all mar like for all countries if this is the same, but from my own experience, you know, becoming a brand ambassador within the last um, like nine months or so, um, I've had so much support and so much encouragement from people at um, from you know, Jim Beam, Glenfiddich, the McAllen, like you know, like just so many. Um, you know, buddies that are in the industry. And I, I think it actually it probably represents the spirit of whiskey um, it, it, right down to the distillery. So in Scotland, there's a lot of like sharing amongst distilleries and there's a lot of community amongst distilleries. People go to different distilleries and work there. Um, you know, we trade barrels, we, you know, buy barrels from each other for our blends and, and things like that. And I, I noticed it as well when I was in Kentucky, when we were talking about bourbon. Um, you know, everyone knows each other in the industry and, um, and, you know, if, if something goes wrong at, you know, Heaven Hill, then they can call up Jim Beam and say, Hey man, do you have this part for the still that's not working? And they'll drive it on over and give him a hand. Um, that's you know, there's there. So I think it w it would be doing the, the whole industry a disservice if the brand ambassadors were like at each other's throats or we didn't get along like you know we spend a lot of time together doing sort of the same you know whiskey shows in all the different provinces uh it becomes like you know whiskey sort of um summer camp like you, you all end up in the same hotel you know you hang out with each other and you you trade drams and 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 yeah i think it would be it would be completely against the spirit of whiskey if the brand ambassadors didn't get along and didn't have a good time and didn't make time for each other to 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 have that sort of um, friendship. Um, so yeah, no, we're all like, we're all buds. They're all the best. Like, it's just, it's such a wonderful, wonderful community be, to be a part of from, you know, in, in all respects that I've ever been a part of it as like a, someone who did a whiskey club to someone who was a, a, an enthusiast and now to actually working in the industry on all ends. I I'm grateful because it's, it's been, uh, it's been lovely. Yeah. That's all. Honestly, it, that's, it's, a unique thing because I, I've been in other types of industries and I've never noticed it like this before. It's very cutthroat in other places and totally the opposite here, which is awesome. Totally the opposite, which is great. Great, great. Love it. Wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, exactly. Um, quick shout out to Roy from Makovita, another reviewer, and Vite, I think I pronounced that wrong. Sorry, buddy. Um, and also Food Quig. These guys, like I said, we all kind of support each other. And it's it's awesome. Thanks we for, can talk thanks for day, hanging but... out with us tonight. That's great. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Yeah. I hope you're all enjoying whiskey too. I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I get a strong vanilla note on this on this barter house. Actually, I, I wanted to mention that really quick, and I'm gonna quickly give it a mark if you don't mind. And you don't have to agree. And you don't. The beauty is you don't actually have to say anything about it. <laughs> I'm gonna say it's an A. I, I like it. It's, I mean, when I think, it, and this is the problem is you have this, we all have this, or not we all, sorry. A lot of people have this misconception of age and age should mean better, but it doesn't in bourbon. And, and I've had better bourbons, but this is a very good bourbon. And for 20 years old at a hundred bucks, I think it's well worth the investment. So I'm going to give it an A. Um, a younger bourbon that you've given me the pleasure of trying I'm just gonna cleanse that palate. Yep. Cleanse that palate. Um, I noticed the master distiller is super young. Uh, I, maybe he just looks young. I'm not. Uh, Sam Mead, I think his name is. Uh, the master distiller from the from Wyoming. Wyoming, yeah. Um, I actually not, don't know. I don't know if that's his. I don't know if uh, it's Sam Mead or something like that. Anyway, um. I think it's just a family business and, and he kind of is the eldest grandson or whatever. And now he is the, he's the guy uh, doing the whiskey, but um, do you know anything about this, uh, 
doing over there? Or I did read um, about Wyoming that um, they had the master distiller who worked at at uh, Maker's Mark for a while um, was there was their master distiller. Um, so that so and I, it, but all the sort of stuff that I got uh, online probably by some of the people that you know are joining us tonight. Um, thank goodness for them and all the research that they do um, because I Google it often. Um, uh, yeah, so Steve, Steve Nally from Maker's Mark was the one sort of like being, I don't know if he was the, the master distiller and maybe it's coming up in the comments because people will have Google. I should have had like my little computer, like I'm literally okay. sitting next to a computer and somebody so might be able to tell us, but, um, saying, some people are saying that there's, um, 22 catch 22 is saying that the, there's a lady that helps with the, the flavor profiling um and that she's awesome which so far i'm enjoying the way this smells and i haven't tasted it just yet but um i think there's a there's, it, there's a patel used to work for them and now he's i think with whistle pig if i'm not mistaken Got it. Got it. okay no that's I'm, perfect uh, that's perfect because actually all of the stuff that i saw online was from a while ago uh and i looked at their website and i couldn't find sort of a um that sort of story on it so um yeah uh so no this is all very helpful because this was actually um uh recommended to me by uh wee willy whiskey who is a whiskey enthusiast who works for willow park in calgary in oh. alberta um and i'm a huge fan of of the the willow park store out there um and i go as often as i can uh, and he is uh, a, a whiskey nerd just like us. And he, uh, I was like, what, what can I, what can we get that's like, you know, not maybe available in Ontario. And he was a huge fan of this one. Um, and uh, yeah, so the, the uh, I, as far as I know, and I, I looked at it, it seems to me as though the mash bill is 68 corn, 20% wheat, and then 12% bar malted barley. Um, that's what I found online for this one. Okay, cool. Thanks. It's uh, 88 proof, 44%. I have to get used to saying um, ABV because I work in Scotch. So it, for a long time, like my mind went automatically to proof because I drank so much American whiskey. Um, and it's done. I'm terrible at math, even though it's literally just double. Um, sometimes I embarrassingly cannot do the math in the moment because I get nervous. Um, so actually the bottle, and I don't know if I've shown you the bottle yet. It's right here. There we go. Yeah. Very nice. It literally like, says 44% 88 proof. And I'm like, thank you, Wyoming whiskey for doing the math for me. <laughs> I don't know how much I appreciate that. <laughs> so I get like, um, a grassy note on the nose. Yeah, definitely, Combined. definitely grassy, definitely a little a little green like a little like whenever i say green i always think of like if you take like um if you took a knife and you sort of scraped it across a branch that next layer under like some like yeah. some irish whiskeys that i i really love have that sort of note to it and i i'm, I'm getting the grassiness that you're talking about and, and i'm getting a slight bit of greenness but but not like definitely not like oh this is this is, no, no. you know, super just like, young. Is, yeah. And as far as I know, I think it's between four and five years old. Okay. I wonder, yeah. I'm wondering what the char is on these barrels because I would say that it's probably kind of low in my opinion. I'm, I'm Maybe I'm way off, but um, I would say that it's probably a one or a two. But yep. I, mean, I could be way off. Peter White might know. He's not saying. Um <laughs> Yeah. The I, on the palate I get like a a mintiness. Yes. Yes, 100%. You're 100% right. It's bright. It's very bright. It's um a very easy drinking bourbon. It's it's actually it's quite lovely and I see why we'll enjoy it. I mean, it's it's interesting, you know, going from a a a a 20 year um sort of 90 proof. Well, it's 88 proof. So it's not that far off. Um, but going from the richness of the barter house 20 and how big a mouthfeel that was to this one, which is, is, um, a really approachable 
bourbon actually like if you know if you were if you were starting off into your whiskey journey um this one would be an absolute uh, you know a, a very pleasant one to to sort of uh get to know the category with i think i get like um i get like an unripe banana like that freshness of like that from the banana peel when it's not ripe it's hard to kind of split you know what i'm talking about like it, it's kind of probably similar to what you're talking about with the scraping a branch idea um I, yeah it's very green yeah it's green and, and yeah yeah, but there's a sweetness to it too. Like I don't, I, I don't know if the notes that we're describing it describes how nice it actually is. But um, I think the Scotch for Dummies are taking off, and a few other guys. Good night. Thanks for joining. Good night. Actually, Drew's still sticking around. I just whoever is representing the Scotch for Dummies symbol tonight is taking off. So Scotch for Dummies are four guys from the U.S. Uh, basically. Me and uh, two other guys, or three other guys actually, no, four other guys, are Canadian reviewers, but uh, four different channels, including my own. And then the rest of us are American, so it's pretty cool. And we're all kind of scattered across North America. Actually, I think a couple of them are, are British as well, so. I love that. I think that's amazing. Yeah, it's it's cool. Like, it's a nice little community that that we're developing. We we're all still kind of kind of getting to know each other, and it's it's hard to keep track because it's growing pretty quickly. But um, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I like this. I like this. I would say. Do you do you remember how much this cost? Roughly. No. <laughs> I uh. Maybe somebody knows in the chat below. I'm going to yeah, say that we, probably we can... between 30 and $40-ish. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Roy's Scottish. I should have known that. Actually, I probably didn't know that. Um, he's not too happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies, buddy. <laughs> yeah, he, that's right because he uh, – yeah, I should have known that. Oh, well, this is what happens when you're live. You say a lot of things that you <laughs> – all right yeah but we roll on with the on the whiskey you know, topic we, can, we can do a little bit of editing so you know if, you, if somebody comes on and has a blooper you know we, we can edit it out but no this is authentic this is authentic whiskey tasting right here this is raw whiskey tasting <laughs> as raw as it gets it doesn't get any better <laughs> um i don't think anything will beat my lap Two two live reviews ago where I, I did a whiskey after the thrones. I don't are you a Game of Thrones fan at all? I haven't even started. My husband is like he's on it. I am I haven't even started yet. But I'm I feel like I wanna I feel like now like I'm like, okay, can I come into your little club? All you Game of Thrones people too? Like We're, well, it's it's very exclusive to about I think it's like tens of millions of people <laughs> across the planet. Like it's a pretty big club. But um, the, I wish I was in your position where I didn't watch it yet because then you can just binge watch all seven seasons. Yeah, it feels like, um, you know, it, it could be a thing during the, the winter if there's a little downtime. But then, you, you know, it gets dangerous, right? All of a sudden, it's like, oh, my God, 12 hours later. And you're like, <laughs> I haven't even brushed my teeth today. Like, what did I do? And you're like, oh, I watched, you know, 14 episodes and – when it's dark again like when did that happen so yeah it's uh, there is something to be said about watching it with a community of people all at the same time and like you know having that sense of excitement just like o the olden days where there was no streaming and we all used to have to hunker down in front of a television yeah. at the same time and then talk about it the next day we couldn't even talk about it on twitter like we just had to go to work and be like did you see friends last night like omg so i was i was a, I that's, yeah. That was a guilty pleasure of mine as well, friends, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's on Netflix right now. I I bought my wife, quote unquote, my I bought my wife the uh, the seasons from season, I think it's one to nine. They're on my shelf. Yeah. Um, but you didn't buy it for her. Yeah, exactly. I, I totally <laughs> myself. Just slipped it in a gift for her so that it looked like I was buying it for her, but totally one of those presents that's fine we've all done that <laughs> we have all bought a present that was for ourselves here and there 
once in a while. It's all good. It's like it's all good. So I, I'm curious to hear what would you what would you rate the uh, the old Wyoming whiskey small batch bourbon? Yep. Uh, 88 proof from Wyoming. This is a solid buy in my opinion. Um, I, I actually I wanted to add one more tasting note. I, I picked up like a flat cola at the end there, um, like on on the palate. On the finish, like a flat, like a like a like a pop, like a Coke, like a exactly. Coca Cola, like a flat. You're absolutely right. Yeah, I'm gonna say this is like borderline A minus B plus for me. Um, I like it. Yeah. It's it's really really nice. Uh, hold on, someone's asking me to ask you a question. Of course, Roy is trying to test my Scottish knowledge here. Um, ask her about. I don't even, I can't even begin to pronounce that word. Kinevi. It's a wonderful brand. Kinevi, there you go. Yeah, I don't know. Kinevi. Um, a hidden sister of Balvini, apparently. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Kinevi, it's it sort of, it, it's under the William Grant umbrella. Um, and actually, like, if you go to Balvini and Glenfiddich, Kinevi is like, it's right there. Um, as well. Um, most of what Kinnanvi does, um, you know, a lot of it goes into um, some blends because um, we also have like Gervin. Um, so we have a, a couple different um, distilleries under our umbrella. Um, I actually haven't even had the pleasure of a Kinnanvi yet. Um, even when I was in Scotland, it was just one of those things. I, 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 I think I think I might have had one one afternoon and like a big sweep of um of tastings but i never uh really got to sort of like hunker down with with any of those whiskeys um so i so it's sort of on my list of things to do when i go back and to sort of see um the other distilleries that are making you know like uh, uh, single malts and 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 scotch underneath like our william grant's umbrella for sure yeah 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 yeah, um, it, it's in monkey shoulder, apparently. Roy says he's sending it. He's going to find a way to get it to me. <laughs> he's going to um, get it to you. Nice. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, yeah, I, 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 I think let's, let's, let's get, let's, his name's Roy. Roy from Scotland. Roy, Roy Aquavite, or I don't know. I'm not sure how that. I mean, in Italian, it would be aqua vita, so the the, the water of life. Water, I guess. Yes, that's right. That's correct. Uh, so, is he a fan of Kinnanvi? I think so. It seems that way. He's a reviewer as well. Um, he's from Scotland. He was upset when I said some Canadian, American, and British reviewers, and I didn't mention Scotland, which is crazy. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm all about Scotch, but <laughs> <laughs> um, and. And Drew was asking about uh, Monkey Shoulder. He's from Scotch for Dummies. Yep. Um, I don't know if he was asking. I just noticed him in the comments. Monkey Shoulder is affiliated with you guys, but are they blending using Glenfiddich or Balvenie? Glenfiddich. It would be. It would be. It would be a, a blend using using Glenfiddich. I mean, that being said, you know, uh, the whole when we're talking about Scotch, um, all distilleries are buying barrels for their blends from other distilleries. So, um, you know, for us, you know, it, it makes sense that like, you know, actually, you know, most of the stuff that comes up off of the still at, at, at any given distillery goes into blends. Blends are the number one, you know, selling whiskey. So we're, we're not, we're not a very small portion of what we make goes into single malts and, and often, um, it all ends up in blends and a beautiful blend. Like a monkey shoulder is great. We're, we, we got it in Canada. Not, not that long ago. It's re like, I think within the last like two years or so. Um, and it's a, it's a, it's a great, great sipper, great in cocktails. Um, but it is one of those blended sort of, um, it's, it's a, it's a blended malt. So it's a malt, blend. so it's, it's essentially blends of single malts instead of using, um, blending whiskeys so nice um yeah. mark is saying that he bought he's directing this to you jamie i bought my last my last third into sample bottles of future reference to uh, 
I don't know if he's directing that to you actually. Maybe there's another Jimmy in the chat. I don't know. I don't know what he's saying. I, I misunderstood that. Um, Mark, you want to clarify what you're saying, buddy? <laughs> Mark, is it give, give one more try. One more try. <laughs> Mark is. Um, I'm here for you, Mark. <laughs> he's a Canadian uh, whiskey reviewer that lives, um, I think, in Korea. I'm almost. Uh, I, it's Korea. Oh, cool. Okay, awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um yeah he's he's i don't know if he's gonna repeat it anyway um we're, we're gonna get mark we're gonna make sure we answer your question regardless like we, <laughs> you can always email me we'll, we'll get you whatever you need like we're yeah yeah <laughs> mark's a great honestly he's a great guy that i just i it's so hard to keep up with the check because it's continuously going there's a bunch of people we have about 12 right now with us but it fluctuates we've had up to i think 16 and then it's gone back down um awesome. when we get it's off nice to, like, really... come and hang out with us for the evening that's awesome yeah Love exactly it. there's a couple people well there's at least one person on set here as well so <laughs> <laughs> so that's who you keep looking at like throwing glances to every once in a while it's nice yeah it's good. we're communicating with our eyes <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So have you been to any distilleries in Kentucky? I have not. I have not gone to Kentucky. That's eventually the goal. Maybe my next year's bourbon slash American whiskey month will be in Kentucky. You should do it live from Kentucky. Live. Um, you know, I always talk about my, my sort of love of Kentucky and how I came into whiskey, you know, through a, a trip to Kentucky. Um, so, you know, I think it's magical there. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a big, big fan. I, I had my first like whiskey tasting at the, the, the Beaumont, um, with Dixon Deadman. It was one of the reasons why I got into whiskey in the first place. So, you know, it was, it was something that was, you know, Kentucky is very like precious to me. So I, you know, if you need any, you know, recommendations. Well, I'll definitely be calling you and asking you where I got to go and what I should say and. <laughs> Yeah, I'll give you the lowdown on all of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Roy is asking if you know a Gemma Patterson. Uh, I love Gemma so much. I just went to Washington um, with Gemma and David Stewart, actually, from Balvenie, um, our, our malt master. Um, Sam Simmons, our global ambassador. So me, Gemma, um, David, and and Sam went uh, along with, there was some uh, Tracy Franklin, who's the Glenfiddich brand ambassador. We were all down doing a tasting in Washington together. Uh, Gemma was one of the first people I, I went to New York and I shadowed her uh, on the job. She is an absolute delight and she knows whiskey better than probably anyone I've ever met in my entire life. She worked at the, at the distillery for a really, really long time. Um, and so, and we're talking like, when she worked there, like when she became a brand ambassador, she, she literally worked the malting floors, you know, for an overnight shift. Like she is hardcore. She knows her stuff. If you have any, like for me, she is like, I'm like, Gemma, I don't understand this. And she like, just like hammers it out for me. And I'm like, okay, I got it. She is brilliant and she is so fun. And if she is your brand ambassador in the States, you are in great hands because she is absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Big fan. Awesome. Um, if you guys haven't already, check out the the review that I did with Jamie on various Balvenies because uh, she tells a story about her experience on the malting floor at Balvenie and it is absolutely hilarious. I think you guys will really enjoy that. Uh, <laughs> I just want to give a quick shout out. We have somebody from Italy today. His name's Jacopo. Cool kid. What's up, buddy? Thanks for Hi, joining Italy. us. What? Awesome. Welcome. Yay. <laughs> Um, Tom R, what's up, buddy? I just noticed you now. Guys, I'm trying to get to whatever you're saying in the chat, but that's the unfortunate part about being by myself, unlike Scotch for Dummies and Scotch Test Dummies and Bubba and the Beard. I'm only able to uh, do one thing at a time. So um, That's okay. Any, we, can, we can also answer questions in the comments later on if anyone's, you know, curious about anything or, yeah, for sure. No question will go unanswered. <laughs> um, Welsh Toro is asking if 
Valve, any 15 year single barrel bourbon might come back? No. Well, I mean, okay. I should, I, okay. So there is no, as far as I know, there is no plan for that, that 15 year to come back. Um, they have committed to the 15 sherry cask. That being said, I'm some, I'm, uh, you know, uh, the Belveni has been a, a great brand um, in terms of innovation and um, and uh, sort of keeping things fresh and 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 you know kind of so uh, you know I I would never say maybe never um, but as it stands right now there there are no plans for that one to come back the the sherry cask is has hit such a sweet spot. People love it so much. There's still that 15, original 15 kicking around. Like if you can find it, like Dusty's and things like that, still at a, a relatively reasonable price. Um, so it's it's out there. Um, but as it stands, we're we're going to go for the, the Sherry cast from now on. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a couple of things that are being said. Um, whatever. We, we can let some of these things go, Drew. Oh, if no. <laughs> Um, I guess you can imagine. Um, there's a little bit of a cult following that the people that follow some of the reviewers that are part of the whiskey fabric have for Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you feel about that stuff? The Elijah Craig Barrel Proof is like bonkers. Yeah. I had a bartender in San Francisco pour me the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof and uh, it was um it was awesome it was it's like it's you know when you have a barrel proof it's like you know whatever i, I always liked elijah craig so whenever you get the barrel proof version um oh no i turned my camera off <laughs> that that's i'm in low power mode hold on one second we're gonna fix this um uh, anyway. that was partially that was partially part of the complaint before because uh they wanted to see more of your face and i think the top just the top part of your hair is a little bit cut off. Oh, uh, that's my hair is so cute though. Uh oh. Unacceptable. 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 <laughs> um, uh, Catch Twenty Two is asking if you've tried the Lot Forty Cast Strength, and I know you have because you posted it on Bourbon Thing. Sure um, did. I'm very jealous because I thought Spencer was my friend, but uh, ah. <laughs> clearly I didn't get the invite to uh, to that whatever it was. Um, where you got to try the new series that's coming out this fall. Do you want to talk a little bit about that or you can oh just God, say like it or not. Do. What's yeah, that? No, so you can still hear me, but I'm just looking through my phone right now, trying to find out how to turn. I turn it on low battery settings by accident. I okay. love being on live. It feels like it's just an adventure <laughs> and I don't even know what's going to happen next. So, so the, so the lot 40, um, cast strength. So I was lucky enough to, I'm back. Okay. So go. the lot 40, um, that I got to have, which was like super amped about, um, it was, so I actually got to taste it with Dr. Don a little while ago. Um, and, uh, he pulled a barrel sample and then Mark Bylock went on a crazy thing about um, getting the cast strength to the LCBO. Um, and he fought for it and fought for it and fought for it. And apparently this is something that happens now. Yeah. Um, well, when I was at your house, I got to try the, the, the Law 40 cast strength. You, you um, well, the, the straight from the barrel actually. It's, I don't know if it's gonna be the same juice as the cast strength bottled, but I was just, I would assume it's pretty similar, right? It's going to be what? 14 years old? 12. 12 years 12. old. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, um, man, it's such a good whiskey. I'm such a huge, like lot 40 fan, uh, that this was like, um, if you love lot 40, like it's, it, there's, it isn't, it, you're going to die for this one. Like it's so bonkers. Uh, and the event was so great. And like, you know, everyone was having so much fun, but this lot 40 was like, um, you know, the one actually, the one that I have here is like true straight from the barrel lot 40. So the, the, 
it's a little more rough around the edges. Like I remember showing you there's all sorts of char inside the like little bottle and everything. This is a slightly more refined version of that. But, um, you know, if you love Lot 40, this is like super amplified, like super, um, super Lot 40. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you're comfortable divulging your favorite, but for those of you that don't know, it's going to be the y JP Weiser's 35 year old, uh, Gooderham or Gooderham. Um, I think it's what set 17 or 20, 17, right? Yeah. Some, and it's, um, it's, yeah. The, and it's, the it's three, called the three grain, I think. Yeah. 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 And then the Pike Creek 21 year old and lot 40 cash strength which is going to be 12 years old um i'm assuming they're going to be bonkers wiser is doing incredible things for canadian whiskey i'm really 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 happy about it because it's been a long time coming and we, we kind of we needed this <laughs> yeah I, I mean canadian whiskey we're doing great we're making great you know great stuff and and i think that like you know we we've always been very humble about our whiskey in canada we've always sort of you know like just been like, oh, you know, like eh, we'll price it a certain way, and well, you know, we won't we won't push it too much. And I think that you know we're we're getting to a point where we're like, you know what, we're doing great. Like we are, <laughs> we are actually doing really well, and um and we're proud of it. And that's not a very Canadian thing to say. Like we're so proud of this, but like we have to because we're making really really good whiskey here. So it's it's nice to see us finally sort of like coming out and being like you know what here is you know it's essentially like you know ross henry who who um was the one that developed the he was it's basically they're they're inspired by the buffalo trace and tea collection sort of thing so it's their you know their their beautiful whiskeys that they put out already and then it's sort of the the amplified versions the 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 big the big ones of the yeah it's awesome. It's, I'm super excited for everyone to try them when they come out. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really exciting for us. I'm, I'm super pumped about it. I hope to be, well, I hope Spencer watches this and knows that I'm a little bit sad that uh, I wasn't invited this weekend. <laughs> I, I have no doubt that you, there will, there will be some whiskey with your name on it. I mean, I mean like, you know, um, yeah, I, 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 I think, <laughs> anyway, I, mean, I don't work for Corby, so I can't really do anything about it. But, um, hey, Spencer's your buddy. Spencer's a pretty cool guy. No, he's a super cool guy. I'm just, I'm totally kidding. I love Spencer. Um, Balvini, what's new and exciting with Balvini? Is there anything you want to share with our viewers? Yeah, yeah. There's, uh, and we can actually talk about this um, maybe you know in a couple months or whatever. If you're not sick of my face yet. Uh, we have the triple cask peated version coming out in duty free, which is a 14 year, like our triple cask that, you know, I can see it right there sitting on your thing. Yep. So triple cask, but made with peated malt, um, uh, sherry, bourbon refill. Um, and then we've got the peat week, uh, the 14, uh, that, uh, is coming out, I think in October, uh, not in Canada, unfortunately. Um, uh, but you know, I might have some purse samples, uh, that could be a thing. Um, but in the States that will be released. So yeah, belveni has been doing, you know, a peated run of malt for many, many years. Uh, you know, we, we, the 14 sort of was a great age for it. It's really standing up. Uh, it's a beautiful whiskey with those traditional sort of like Belveni, um, you know, heathered honey and these beautiful sort of flavors, just a very light light smoke it, not like an iodine-y um or really phenolic sort of flavor profile it's a very um easy going peat so if you know if you're like looking to, to get to someone it. in the peat door that's the one you want to do <laughs> awesome um yeah. yeah this is the one you were referring to the 16 year old balvini triple cask it i actually have a question for you it says all the one is Oloroso Sherry Butts, two is First Fill Bourbon Barrels, three traditional whiskey casks. What is yes. what does that refill. mean? Refill. Refill? Refill barrels. Yeah. So first fill, refill, sherry cask. And that's the triple cask lineup. That's a peated triple cask. All of those ones are sherry, first fill, refill. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Guys, if you haven't already, 
head over to at bourbon thing on Instagram, follow this lovely lady. Um, also you want to check out now you got to remind me the podcast name. I always call it whiskey buzz and I get in a lot of trouble for that. <laughs> well, you can find it through whiskey dot buzz. Um, but it is the whiskey topic. Um, and it's me and Mark, um, just chatting about whiskey. He just had babies. So we've, t we took a little hiatus, um, so he can, you know, get that organized. Um, and then, you know, and then I, I imagine his dogs make a couple appearances on, on the podcast. And I imagine that coming up in, in the next little while, we'll have some babies in the background too. So yeah, it's a fun one. Uh, super chill. We usually, you know, we like to have a dram while we talk. So very similar sort of casual conversation about whiskey. We get lots of brand ambassadors on, we get master distillers. Like for some reason people take us seriously and want to talk to us. So um, yeah, it's always a fun one. You can get it on iTunes or go to whiskey.buzz and uh, get it from there. But um, yeah, this was awesome. This is so yeah. much fun. Honestly, whiskey topic is the best drive, like audible, whatever, listening to like whatever you're driving home from work, Something to listen to, go to Whiskey Topic because it's it's nice, it's easy listening. You guys have a constant flow in your conversation. There's never a dull moment, and I love it. It's awesome, and you're awesome. Thank you so much for um, for doing this. Stay on the line. We're gonna go offline in about two seconds, and just gonna say a couple more things, um, and then we can just chat about a couple more things. Uh, but is there anything else that you want to plug? Anything else that's going on with you? No, I'm, I'm, uh, well, if, if you're in Canada, like it's whiskey season, so I'll be around. Um, you know, I'm doing a, a bunch of the whiskey shows. Um, but yeah, I usually post that stuff on my Twitter and Instagram. And so I'm kicking around the country for the next couple months. Um, and no, I'm just, I, I'm grateful to be here. And, I'm, and thanks for thinking of me to, to do this bourbon tasting with you. It's always nice to sort of revisit uh your roots where you came from and and what got you passionate about the industry in the first place and so you know here's two great examples and uh no thanks for having me thank you thank you for joining us guys uh thanks for joining us you guys were very active on the conversation tonight on the chat i really appreciate it i really appreciate it. even if it's just 10 people five people whatever it is we're going to be doing our thing over here and hopefully you guys can join us thank you so much um Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and I do have some news coming up shortly. I will be sharing with you guys, but not in this, not in this, um, that'll be a future thing. Thank you guys. Cheers.